So I really can't help but draw the comparison between the two speeches that were given yesterday. On one hand, you have Donald Trump, who's in Orlando at the Turning Point Action Conference. And then you've also got Joe Biden, who's over in France in Normandy, giving a speech about D-Day. And Biden's speech was about democracy. He, he talked about how we had to fight back then for democracy. We're fighting for democracy again today. And even if Trump was out of the picture, I think we'd still have to fight for democracy, folks, because people, they, they get a little lax with voting. They get a little bit lax with the things that are critically important to running this country and democracy. So it's a fight that has to go on no matter what. But Biden's speech was uplifting, although he didn't invoke that shining city on a hill like Ron Reagan did when he left office in that speech. But I think he's he's pointing to an America that has hope. We have stock market highs. Uh, just in the past couple of days, we've got unemployment that's lower. We've got the economic engine of the United States continues to charge on. And I think that if you happen to hear that speech that Ron Reagan gave when he left office about the promise of America being that shining city on the hill, I think we have become more like that shining city on the hill. And I think we always have more work to do. But yes, I believe in an uplifting, positive outlook for America. When you look at what Ron Reagan left and where we are today, it's a hell of a lot more positive, I think, and stronger than it was back then as testimony to the fact that we are a country that always looks forward. But when you go to the speech that Donald Trump gave folks, it was a, a dark speech. It was obsessed with revenge. Donald Trump at one point was starting to list things that were rigged. And at one point he just said, it's all rigged. Everything's rigged. <laughs> I, I don't believe that is the case, but Here's an article from The Independent, and it says Donald Trump brands U.S. a third world hellhole run by perverts and thugs. Donald Trump branded the U.S. a third world hellhole run by perverts and thugs in his latest 24 campaign speech, a rambling, nearly two hour long set of remarks to close out a right wing conference in Florida. He said the election will decide whether your generation will inherit a fascist country or a free country. Mr. Trump told the right-wing activist conference, millions of illegal aliens have stormed across our borders. It's an invasion, like a military invasion. Our rights and liberties are be being torn to shreds. Your country is being turned into a third world hellhole run by censors, perverts, criminals, and thugs. And, you know, I've done different podcasts and we've talked about immigration and legal immigration obviously is preferred, but... In essence, folks, immigration is important to the overall success of this country. These people come here to work. and Many of them are in construction, as you know. Many of them are in the food industry. They're doing the things that need to be done that are important to propel this country into the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years. We have to have immigration. We don't want to end up like Russia and China, who have a demographic time bomb where their populations are forecast to shrink. And I think that's important to realize for the vision of America. To have a strong America, we need to have some form of immigration. So getting back to the speech, Donald Trump told his supporters that their task and calling is to liberate America from these communists, racists, Marxists, globalists, and warmongers. Is there anything left? Who want to plunder the future of our country. And of course, they even had to touch on trans rights. And this is something that Really, when you talk about trans people, you're talking about less than 2% of the American population. However, they chose that it was necessary to bring that up at the Turning Point Conference. Charlie Kirk brought it up. Why do they do that, folks? Because it's red meat. To talk about two, less than 2% of the American population in a way that they do is just red meat. It does nothing to enhance America. It does nothing for your average American family. But take this. This is a clip from that same article. It says former Fox News personality Megan Kelly said she no longer has empathy for people experiencing gender dysphoria. There should be a healthy measure of ridicule, she told Charlie Kirk during a lengthy discussion about trans people and the erasure of trans rights, which Kirk said is a winner politically for Republicans. 
Asked how she feels about being labeled transphobic, Kelly said, okay, whatever. Honestly, I've been called worse. Let them call you whatever you want. Who gives a damn? And is that the society that we've got here, folks, now? That society of who gives a damn? I don't, I don't think that's where we should be as Americans and where we want to go, <laughs> obviously, as Americans. But I've got to play this for you. So there was a glitch that Donald Trump made, and, and here he is, folks. Have a listen to this. When I'm president, I will use Title 42 to end the trial, and we have to do this. What? What, what's going on there? We have to use Title 42 to end the trial, he almost said. The tr- and then it's almost like something glitched, and then he went on to something totally obscure, which he does a lot when it when he glitches. You're kind of thrown into something, something, something else. And then, folks, I have to show this to you. This is a clip from Dr. Phil, and Dr. Phil gave... Donald Trump an interview. And I think we have to just reinstate the fact that and reiterate the fact that Dr. Phil is a psychologist. And (laughs) Dr. Phil said this. Have a listen. My question is why? I understand how. I know you got a thick skin. You're not one of those people that's afflicted with the need to be loved by strangers. I get that. I think that's true. What? Dr. Phil said, I don't think you're the type of person that's afflicted by the need to be loved by strangers. And look at Donald Trump's body language. He looked down and he said, yeah, I think that's true. That doesn't, no, that's not true. And Dr. Phil is a psychologist here, folks. And I mean, this is a huge miss. I'm not a psychologist, obviously. But this is why Donald Trump does rallies. This is why he, he, he does what he does is because he needs that, that sort of confirmation and feedback from everybody else. Um, I'm not saying Dr. Phil's unqualified, but I'm just saying I think he kind of missed it here. And I, I think as a psychologist, there was a need for a little bit more introspection into Trump and why he does what he does. I mean, obviously, this this sort of went off the rails as far as I'm concerned. But folks, the the contrast... We can't forget that contrast between a bright and shining America and one that's obsessed with darkness and revenge. Which America do you think we have? I'm on the bright side here, folks. Till next time.